so guys welcome to leaves and lungs so today we're going to continue the series on soil sciences and uh, today the chapter will be going to be about on development of the soil profile so this is the third uh, third video of the uh, series so since many people have requested to finish off a series completely we are like uh, still continuing with the same uh, syllabus that is same topic okay so after the soil sciences we will be dealing with entomology completely and for if you want to revise all the plant breeding topics you can go and check in our channel because uh, we have posted like uh, 10 to 12 videos so uh, all, all are like exam oriented only okay guys so let's get started and just move on to the main topic so uh, the first thing is how the soil is being developed so you know that the soil formation is a constructive process where all the disintegrated materials that is all the decomposed matter and all the decomposed rock that is disintegrated rocks resulted from the weathering uh, gets converted into a soil body so this we have seen exhaustively completely in the previous two videos and uh, what is the definition of soil profile so uh, the vertical section of the soil shows various layer from the surface to the unaffected plant materials this is known as soil profile okay so this is like basically soil profile is nothing but all the layers where the soil is being formed okay so this is called as uh, soil profile and uh, there are like various layers uh, that forms uh, into an horizon a soil usually contains like three main horizons so usually that is horizon a and horizon b and horizon c okay so uh, this is called as the complete soil profile so these are the three major horizons that is a b and c a is like surface b is like subsoil and c is like substratum okay so these are like special that is o and r are special o is mainly like organic layer and the r is like bedrock okay so this is where uh, the plant where parent material is usually formed okay that is from bedrock so horizons as i said there earlier there are like three major horizons so the surface soil or that layer of the top soil which is liable for leaching and uh, from which soil constituents have been removed is known as horizon A. So horizon A is nothing but it is a top soil uh, where the uh, leaching and everything all the activities undergoes. So it is otherwise called as horizon of uh, el el elevation. And the next layer is intermediate that is below horizon A so obviously it's going to be horizon B. So uh, the materials which are leached from horizon A will be redeposited in the next layer that is on the horizon B. So it is otherwise called as horizon of elevation. And uh, the, uh, horizon C is nothing but it is the layer where parent material from the soil is being formed. Okay, so this is the basic outline. And also like uh, it is one of the key for the soil classification. So depending upon the three layers, soils are being classified. And uh, a hypothetical mineral soil profile will include like uh, all the five layers. Okay. So if the soil classification is not done properly. You have to categorize into like the five layers. That is O, A, B, C and R. Okay, we'll see all the layers one by one. So these are called as like master horizon and sub horizon. So A, B, C are master horizon and O and R like sub horizon. Okay. So the first thing is O horizon. So O horizon is nothing but it is otherwise called as organic horizon. So organic horizon is completely like formed of uh, all the decomposed organic materials, which is like self-explanatory, and they are classified into two types. Okay, that is O1 organic horizon and O2 organic horizon. Okay, so if you can see able to see that is recognize uh, all the plants and the animal residues on the surface It is called as organic that is O1 horizon and if you can't able to recognize uh, all the residues uh, with your naked eye Then it is called as O2 organic horizon. Okay, so this is like simple classification and mainly Organic horizons are commonly seen in uh, the places where human uh, human habitation is not there Especially in the forest area. So because the decomposed materials will not be cleared by any human activities and they will uh, remain in the forest surface forever Okay, so they are like usually generally absent in grassland and cultivated soil Okay, so just remember how horizon is always present in the forest areas It is not present in grasslands or cultivated soils. So this is like a key uh, prelims trivia. Just remember this alone so as I said earlier, like air horizon is a layer where the accumulation uh, usually takes place. Okay, so it is again classified into three types. That is A1 horizon, A2 horizon and A3 horizon. So it is a topmost mineral horizon formed adjacent to the surface. There will be like accumulation of humified organic matter associated with the mineral fraction and they are darker in color. Whereas like A2, so this is the region of maximum elevation that is where the maximum accumulation of clay iron and aluminum oxides and also various organic matter usually takes place so this is the most important biological activity layer of the hair horizon whereas a3 is partly wedged between the b horizon and a2 so it is considered as a transitional layer between a and b horizons
with more dominant properties of A1 or A2 above the underlying B origin. So sometimes this layer is also being absent. So this is the some this is the uh, key fact about A3 layer. Okay. So guys, it is very simple. It is an accumulating layer of minerals and organic matter. It is classified into three types. That is A1, A2, A3. So uh, the region of maximum deposition is at the A2, whereas uh, a1 is the topmost and A3 is like a transitional layer. It is very easy to understand. Just uh, have the basic key facts alone in your head. It is like easy to write the essays also with this. And the next thing is B horizon. So B horizon is the uh, in which dominant features are accumulation of the clay, iron and uh, aluminum or humus will take place. So like uh, so this is the region of maximum accumulation and uh, they are like again classified into like three types that is b1 b2 and b3 similar to a a2 b2 as the zone of maximum accumulation of clay iron and aluminum oxide whereas uh, a1 b1 is a transitional layer between a3 the, between a and b okay so this is the activity is like very less when compared to b2 here and b3 is again a transitional layer between the underlying c and b2 okay so the classification is like pretty straight uh, easy also so just remember the keyword that is accumulation of uh, clay iron aluminum or humus like uh, like b2 as the zone of maximum accumulation so that's all about the b horizons and c horizon so it is obviously it is below the two horizon that is a and b and it is relatively less affected by soil forming process because it is outside the zone of major biological activity so because here no uh, soil formation such as humus formations or any accumulation of any clay iron or aluminum oxides going to take place but it usually contains accumulation of carbonates as well as sulfates and also like calcium and magnesium is also formed so this is the layer which has all the other chemical agents which is less, less required by the plants and the another layer that is R layer. So it is an underlying consolidated bedrock and it may or may not be like the parent rock from which the soil is being formed. Okay. So R is basically the bedrock. It has no direct uh, form, uh, direct relationship with the soil formation. And the next topic is uh, lithological discontinuity. So although this is not an important uh, for your exams and all, but this could be tested also. Okay, so it it could form a part of the questions like define lithological discontinuity and uh, uh, give the various classification of the soil origin. So it may form a part of the questions. So just remember that key thing alone. So like it's a combination of two or more genetically unrelated materials which is usually present in a soil profile. So example as in the case of alluvial or colluvial soils where like uh, they have uh, like genetically two unrelated soils mixing together. Okay. So this is called as lithological discontinuity and it is indicated by the Roman letters as prefixes to the master horizon. So like the letters like these are used before the horizon layer. Okay. And some other thing is like uh, the definition of pedon and uh, polypedon okay so the smallest volume that can be called as a soil is called as pedon and uh, when a number of pedons combine together it forms a polypedon okay so this is the basic thing and uh, if you want to read more about this you can just pause the video and uh, you can read the definition so since it is not that much uh, important we'll just go into the next thing and we're going to see some important physical properties of the soil so the important physical properties of the soil includes so any soil will be having a certain texture and structure okay and they'll be having color and consistency and density and porosity and they'll be also having a some surface area okay so depending upon the each physical property soil are being classified into various types and like we, we will see uh, everything in detail so today we'll see just alone about the soil texture alone today so others will be discussed later so since they are like uh, less relevant when compared to the texture we'll see we'll see that uh, in the upcoming uh, upcoming videos so the first thing is soil texture. So soil texture the definition is so um, it is a relative percentage by weight where it contains three separate soil uh, elements that is sand, silt and clay or simply refers to size of the soil particles. OK, so soil texture is nothing but where it is a combination of all the, all these three that is sand, silt and clay. So this constitutes the uh, soil texture. So like on the basis soils are classified into various textural classes like sand, silt, clays and loams. So sand is usually nothing but where it contains at least like 70% of the own sand and the clay like with 15% with or less than material by weight. So if it contains 70% amount of sand, then it is classified as sandy soil. 
and the next thing is silt silt is nothing but uh, uh, the silt group includes soil with at least 80 percent silt okay whereas in for sandy it's like 70 percent but for silt is like 80 percent and 12 percent or less clay okay so usually it has the properties are dominated by the silt only and only one textile class is, is present in the silt okay there is no subgroup in silt and the next thing is clay so to be designated as a clay a soil must contain at least like 35 percent of the clay separate and in most cases not less than 40 percent so they are classified as clay soil sandy clay soil and silty clay soil okay so just remember this so they need at least 35 to 40 percent of the clay to be classified as a clay soil and uh, loamy so this is like an important crucial soil because uh, it is where all the important crops are being grown so it may contains many subdivisions subdivisions and um, an ideal loam may be defined as a mixture of sand silt and clay that is it exhibits the property of all the three classifications of the soil textures so it is best suited for growth of various uh, various soils also so like uh, various importance of soil texture has been attributed to the uh, productions of various crops so uh, like these are the uh, various important uh, importance of soil texture so usually like sandy soils have the very lowest water holding capacities so these soils cannot stand dread and unsuitable for dry farming okay and sandy soils are poor storehouse of plant nutrients they they can't store water they can't store plant nutrients also as a result they have very low organic matter also but uh, leaching of applied nutrients is also very high so whatever you give in sandy soil it will go off easily okay so this is the basic uh, thing about sandy soil and it usually facilitates drainage and aeration so so this is like very obvious and the tillage is also very easy for the sandy soil because so you, you you know that how the sandy is usually actually feels like so it is easy to till also unlike clay where the consolidation is usually very strong there uh, like uh, what are the what are the crops that are, that can be grown on sandy soil they usually like potato groundnut and cucumbers can be grown in sandy soils so in contrasting to the uh, sandy soil clay is usually uh, are difficult to till okay that is like very much understandable and they require very much skill in handling also so they are very fine pores uh, and they are poor in drainage and aeration you know that when you pour water over clay soils the possibility of drainage of this uh, water is like impossible that is it has a very high water holding capacity and poor percolation also so as a result of this crops like rice uh, water inten water uh, water submerged crops like uh, rice uh, jute sugar can can be grown very successfully in the soils and uh, finally like loam and silt loam soils are very highly desirable for cultivation so generally the best agriculture soils are those which contains 10 to 20 percent clay 5 to 10 percent uh, organic matter and the rest usually shared by silt and sand so based upon this point you might have understood that loam and silt loam soils are the most desirable for the cultivation so though like um, clay is also an important for crops like rice and jute and sugar can it is the uh, loamy soil that is highly desirable for cultivation since it has all the properties of all the three soils okay so guys that puts end to today's topic so since uh, soil formation is one of the most important areas where upsc is being testing questions all over the years it is like indispensable to avoid these topics so although it is like little boring it is like very mandatory to know all the importance of uh, formation of the soil because this is where all the basic lies so the details that i have been covering are like it's like just the outer or an overview alone okay we are not dealing anything in detail because UPSC doesn't test to that limit you if you just know the basics alone it is very good so uh, if, if you want to give any comments or if you do if you really like the video do share and do comment and uh, anything is welcome and uh, I'll see you in the next lecture thank you guys thank you for watching this video have a wonderful day goodbye